Hello everyone and welcome to the module for uh, functional gears. First of all, what is a functional gear? Well, a functional gear, uh, all gears are really functional. Uh, in this case, a functional gear, however, is one which is defined by function. So you will define to the system what the function of this gear is and it will produce uh, a gear for you which would correspond to that function. This won't be a short video. There's a fair amount to know. And I've started the video several times because it's hard to find a path which will actually give you the order, you, uh, the information you need in the order you need uh, in order for you to begin to play with it um, without just get simply getting a bunch of errors. So let's take this one step at a time, one module at a time, and uh, by the end of it you should have a good idea of what you can create. And uh, feel free to skip through the video at several points because this could get into a bit of gear theory and if you're not interested in learning the specifics, um, just fast forward through until you see another uh, title screen appear because I'll put a title screen uh, before uh, each module as we get through the modules. Alright, here we go. Okay, I guess the first thing we should talk about then is our wheel and pinion. As in the past on all our design screens, we'll consider the uh, gear on the left to be our wheel and the gear on the right to be our pinion. Although in gear vernacular, the larger of the two would normally be called the wheel and the smaller one, the pinion, uh, gets a bit confusing on our uh, design screen. So what we're going to do is stick with our convention where this is the wheel. You can see it's a strange looking wheel in this case. Although we have two round gears on the screen. By the way, uh, these are pitch centrodes is their real name. Any curve which just represents the pitch line is called a centrode. So this is a master centrode and a uh, mating centrode or slave centrode. This uh, wheel on the left, however, is a special type of object that was created just for this module. It is a circular Bernstein Bezier curve. Uh, you're all familiar with Bezier curves from using CAD programs and so on. This is a special form which is rarely seen because it's not parametized by time. It's parametized by angle. And this allows me to, to feed data into this uh, rather strange type of spline and pull it out referenced by angle. That makes it a formula which means this gear, no matter how much data you enter, is simply an object full of polynomial equations which take us from naught to naught, um, but end up as a single equation which is radius is equal to uh, function theta. This allows us to make first and second derivatives of the information, uh, which is what's necessary to make a good uh, non-circular gear set. Uh, s certainly if you need them to specific function, uh, you need data which is accurate. This is why I haven't been able to allow people to draw gears in the past because while a drawing may look like it's high resolution, mathematically um, it's very hard to determine what the first and second derivatives of such a drawing are. So this module is really an attempt to bring that kind of design world to both engineers and artists alike. The engineers need specific information, the artists need specific looks, uh, and I need to be able to allow you to import data easily. So uh, this is our shot at that and I'm sure that it'll morph a bit over time as we discover easier ways to do that uh, between us. Okay, let's um, take a look at how this functions and how the data between the graphs relate to it. Okay, in order to understand how we're going to enter data into the program, we have to understand uh, a little bit about the displays that are on the screen. The one here to my right is an uh, angular position graph. It shows us what position uh, at any given time the two gears are in. If I hit simulate, you can see that as the master gear rotates from 0 to 360 degrees, this red dot moves from the uh, right to the left. So that tells you that the gear, the graph here is actually 0 to 360 degrees along the bottom going from uh, right to left, which may seem a little backwards to you, but uh, it's a visual aid and uh, there's reasons for its orientation. Uh, the graph on the y-axis is similarly uh, the position of the slave. And again, it starts at um, 300, uh, 0 at the top and comes down to 360 at the bottom. So we meet here at the bottom after a full rotation of the two gears. The graph here on the right is called an angular or is called a gear transfer function. Um, it's the most important graph to an engineer who's looking for a particular function. 
the gear transfer function tells us how fast the slave is going uh, in relation to the master. Um, it's uh, between these two graphs you'll be able to analyze the data that's coming in. Uh, it won't matter to the artistic types among you but it may matter to show you what some of your limitations are. Uh, there are limitations to how you uh, to what kind of gears you can create. Obviously gears have to follow certain laws. Um, a huge number of people have requested this module over time and a lot of people have asked me why can't I draw a gear? How would I give you a drawing, a JPEG, etc.? The reason is because in order to tooth a gear or to properly, properly analyze it um, I need some formulas about the data that's coming in and curve fitting is not a perfect world. In this case, I can take your data and fit them all into this CV spline and organize it. Because it's a, a formula, I can properly read the data and compute uh, what we're going to need in order to do two things. One other point, we between two gears, you'll always have a tangent. And this blue line is the tangent between these two gears. It's very easy to two circular teeth because this tangent line never moves. As long as the tangent line doesn't move, the pressure angle will be exactly as you request on a gear. If you're requesting a 20 degree pressure angle, you'll get it. And on the screen here, you can see that uh, we show the current rotation of both gears and also the left and right pressure angle. In non-circular gears, you have two pressure angles, one on the right tooth flank, one on the left tooth flank, and they differ, as do the teeth. Uh, if you make a tooth on a non-circular gear, it's different on its left and right flank. Uh, Gearotic will take care of that for you, of course, but I want to show why it's important in non-circular gears, and it's because the tangent moves. All right, I guess the easiest way to do this is to uh, change one of these knots so you can get an idea of what changes on the screen when we begin to uh, change stuff. So there's a button down here called Knot Edit, and if I hit it, the screen stops rotating, and we go to a screen uh, in which I can change a uh, knot. So I'm going to grab one and move it up. Now you can see when I moved it up, our angular position graph has changed. Uh, it now shows a sharp increase slope on the y-axis. This means that the y-axis at this point is moving quite quickly. And this slow narrow spot means it's moving slowly. Moving at unity, as we saw, would be a 45 degree angle. So this graph tells us that the gears are changing speeds. Uh, I just inadvertently touched the screen and moved another knot. And you can see that the gear now has something of a sine wave on it. Uh, that's a point. Whenever it says not edit mode in effect, make sure that you uh, hit the not edit button to turn it off. Otherwise, when you click on the screen, you will change the knots, and that can get annoying. However, this all has good effect. You can see my tangent line has now moved. It is no longer straight. Um, this is what happens in non-circular gears. And as it does this, uh, the pressure angle which drives the two gears will begin to uh, be different on the left and right flanks and you can see that indicated up here on the screen. The current point uh, is on the gear transfer graph and it's showing that my pressure angle on the left is 14 degrees, my pressure angle on the right is 25 degrees and looking at our control screen we can see I'm asking for a 20 degree so things are already changing. Now the uh, gear transfer graph shows us that we're varying speeds and if we hit simulate we can read on the top of the screen what a current speed ratio at this instant in time is and this one's going up to 1.4 speed and all the way down to a 0.6 speed now on the screen we have a box which shows the knots and the control point ratio demands at the moment what the program tells us is that our maximum speed being requested is at 89 degrees for 2.43 and yet we don't have any 2.43 happening on the gear transfer graph you can see when it goes up uh, we're actually going up to a speed of 1.4 unfortunately this one's going to be a little bit complex to uh, explain why to an engineer, he would say this is useless to me because I'm not getting the speed I want. To an artist, he'd say that's a cool-looking uh, couple shapes. That's that's what I want. It won't matter. The thing is, we need to talk about symmetry for a second. Any gear, I'm going to take this back to a round gear. The length of this gear on its perimeter is equal to the length of the perimeter of the second gear. 
that's what gives them a one-to-one -one rotational ratio. If I grab a knot on a gear and move it up, I've now made the length of this perimeter longer, which means that I have to make sure that the length of the second perimeter is equal, so it too gets longer, and the center moves as well. Well, the problem with that is that we always have to make sure that a gear, after one rotation, the second gear always makes a full rotation as well, if we want the gears to continuously roll. Unfortunately, if we want to specify the speed of a gear as a ratio, then we have to stop the gears from spreading apart and stop the ratios or stop the perimeters from being the same. This means that you end up with gears which cannot rotate 360 degrees. They can only rotate partially. Now, our graph down here at the bottom tells me I'm asking for a ratio of 3.8 to 1 at 89 degrees. And yet our transfer graph, which is this graph right here, um, let's take it to that high point we know that it's the high point, it's the highest ratio, 3.88, and let's um, stop the simulation when it gets there so that we know what it's doing. Okay, here we are at the fastest point of the rotation. We know that because the transfer graph has our um, spike at the top, and it tells us our speed ratio is 2.0071, so we're moving twice as fast as the master. But that's not what we're asking for. If we look at our box of uh, speed demands, we're asking for 3.88. And that's because of a box down here on the screen that I have checked called rollover. Rollover is a special type of circular of non-circular gear demand. It's telling the system that I want a gear that constantly rotates. So if that means I have to violate what I'm asking for as a ratio, violate it. Move the gears as, as you need to. Stretch out the perimeters so that the two gears have equal perimeters. And that guarantees that they can always keep on rotating 360 degrees. Unfortunately, that changes the demands of what you've asked for as a gear speed. If I uncheck rollover, now you can see I have uh, something completely different on the screen. And they don't mesh. This is because the gear is only is only actually viable uh, across a narrow set of angles and as the gear comes around I'm just gonna at this point here the gears mesh and we begin to get what we're asking for on our gear curve and if I allow it to rotate you'll see we're in mesh and when we get to the top of our speed the fastest th uh, point for the second gear we're reading 3.8817 and if we look down at our demand chart sure enough we're asking for 3.8877 so the only way that you can get exact ratios of what you need is with a gear which is partial rotation or a bilaterally symmetrical gear in terms of its data and I'll explain that one in a second but for most of you it means if you're just grabbing lines and moving them. You have a choice between a rollover gear, which will continue to roll, or if you want accuracy to speed, because you're designing uh, something that's going to drive an animated object, for example, and you need a uh, cat's claw to move at a particular speed, you would have to put up with gears which rotate partially. Now the system, I allow you to build these because these are incredibly um, powerful gears for a designer to put in a machine where you turn a knob and while the first gear may rotate any number of degrees the second one is limited to a certain subset of degrees so for this gear for example uh, it would be pinned so it can only start where the two gears mesh which is at the beginning of that curve and it would continue to this point at which point the mechanism would lock and you would say that's as far as you can go you can now rotate the first gear backwards and then stop uh, at the minimum spot and then turn it forwards. I think you get what I mean. Basically this is creating a partial rotation gear. And this strange looking gear is actually the solution to a gear which rotates at constant speed throughout its range except at 90 degrees where it goes to 3.8877 uh, times the speed. Now the rest of the time the system will simply look like it's in la la land uh, because it is. You're rotating a gear through a place that it was not meant to be rotated. This is the point at which the gear was meant to be meshed in your machine and it is allowed to rotate 
until it gets to this point, at which point you would stop rotating. These types of gears were used in gun sights, navigational machines, and so on during World War II uh, because you could design gears that give you a specific function. And just like round gears put into a planetary train multiply their ratios, non-circular functional gears such as these multiply their functions. So you can put a function into a pair of gears, connect them in trains, and you're multiplying terms of a function. So that in the end you could use a series of gears to calculate the effects of gravity on a planet as it rotates another planet. And it's all done through a series of functional gears such as these. Now for the artists among you, these probably aren't the gears that you're going to want to use. You're going to want to check the rollover box, which for the exact same function gives you quite a different gear. It's noteworthy though, if we look at our gear transfer curve for the case of a rollover, turn off the rollover and look at the gear transfer curve, you can see that you're basically getting the same function but to a different scale. It's very hard to control the scale because it's a complex function to figure out exactly what that scaling is. But a person who wants a particular type of speed up but isn't concerned about the exact numbers may be well off to say, uh, I'll go with rollover because then I don't have to worry about uh, how I'm going to uh, handle stopping the mechanism when I get to one end or the other. Uh, there's one more point that you need to know about this transfer curve is that it's multicolor. You can see, well you may not see on the screen at the moment, but it's bright green along this zero spot. It begins to get to be a darker green as it goes up. The color of the graph is related to the pressure angles. And we can notice that you'll see the tangent line is rotating back and forth as this gear rotates. This causes the pressure angles to vary back and forth. And if you look on the transfer graph at the moment, they're 20 degrees as we're asking for. But as we go up the graph, the pressure angle right is going down to zero. Uh, the upper one is going into the high 30s. So it begins to turn a darker green. If I give this a cusp, I'm going to hit not edit and just edit this knot a little bit to give myself a cusp. This bent in convexity is called a cusp. Um, now our gear transfer curve looks quite different, you'll notice. And there's red zones, and the red zones are danger zones for pressure. You should always try to keep your pressure uh, less than 50 degrees if you can on a non-circular gear, and the starting pressure angle has something to do with that. But if it approaches 90, when it hits 90, the gear will no longer mesh. And you begin to lose torque from 50 degrees forward, lose quite a bit of torque. It's a sinusoidal function, so you're okay up until about 50 degrees. But beyond that, your torque transfer mechanism becomes uh, severely disabled uh, in an increasing fashion. So staying below 60, in my experience, is the smart move. Uh, industry specs say to stay below 50. Uh, over here on the positional graph, above it on the text, you'll see maximum left pressure angle 73, maximum right pressure angle 80. Um, so 80 degrees is getting a little bit high. These are suggestions though, because sometimes you can get away with it. Like in the case of this gear, um, the inflection is being met with a tooth that could probably move it without a tooth. So what you can get away with is often a matter of um, uh, more judgment than anything else. But if you see a bunch of red in your graph, that's why it's red, and that's where you should begin to worry that your pressure angle may be getting to be too much. Now, as I said, it is affected by your current pressure angle setting. So you'll notice at the moment I have 20 degrees. I'm going to lower that 20 degrees to 10 degrees and hit a regen on this. And you can see now my maximum left pressure angle is 63, maximum right is 69. Um, that's a much better situation and uh, if you were going to tooth it with involutes you would try to lower this pressure angle down to the point that you can actually um, get as close as you can or remove the inflection. The easiest way to would be to simply grab the inflection and uh, move it. Let's take a look at some of the ways now that you can enter data into the program because just grabbing a knot doesn't seem to be a perfect way of doing it. All right, to enter data, let's delete all the data we have and look at starting a fresh uh, gear. When you start up and enter the functional uh, module, you're going to be presented with one of these gears with the four knots on it. If down here on the screen, um, you'll see your polar display, and it displays your four coordinates. The coordinates are polar coordinates, so the first one is 0, 1, which is uh, 0 degrees, one unit out. And as we discussed, this is a unity circle. 
and even though if you look up at the coordinates display at the top of the screen it says we're over 17.4 at the moment that's because if you take a unity circle and bring it out to the size of what I have set now a module 3 12 tooth gear it will have a radius of 17 so we're talking internally that this circle is a true circle or a unity circle of one so always look at the gear as having a unity of one as its circle and one means that the point is directly in the middle between the two centers of the gears this is how you know that you're at unity so we have zero one the next coordinate is 90 comma one at 90 degrees straight up we have a one 180 one and 270 one obviously this determines a round gear let's say we want to change one of these though we could as I showed you earlier grab the 90 degree one and move it to where we wish it will change both in the list it will change in the gear in the master and the graphs will immediately show it but you can also go down here and beneath the uh, boxes there's a delete button and an add button and underneath it an entry box I could type 90 comma 1.2 for example and hit add because there's already a 90 in there, the program didn't add that coordinate. It simply modified the coordinate. And you have to be careful here because any of those coordinates could have decimal points if they were generated by formulas. So if you begin getting weird curves and can't understand why, look to make sure you don't have like two 90s. And if you do, delete the inappropriate one. Okay, so um, let's, add a sh let's add one in the middle. Let's go to 45 degrees, comma. Uh, 1.4 and hit add. As you can see we now have a knot that has appeared and it's giving us a 1.4 on that point. And our graph shows that there is a rotational difference going on and our transfer graph shows a speed and our maximum speed that we're going to get up to in this particular case is right at that point and it shows us we have a speed ratio of 1.28. Um, that's not what we were asking for though we asked for at 45 degrees and you can see that the maximum is indeed on the 45 degree point we asked for a 1.4 uh, we're actually getting a 1.28 but our low speed is actually below zero it's about 0.8 so if you add the two together they come close to 1.4 but they're still not 1.4 because again there's that sinusoidal correction because we want a constantly rolling gear if I turn over turn off rollover you can see the gears no longer mesh at zero they start meshing at this point here but again as in our last example now that we're um, no longer a f constantly rotating gear our numbers are now accurate and when we get to the top of our swing we're now at 1.40 speed which is exactly what we're asking for so some would then say well that's a drag does that mean that when I design a specific function I can't have a gear that constantly rolls this is where we get into the topic of what I would call bilateral data symmetry yes you can still have a gear which is a constant rotation the question is how to do it well in order to do that let's take our gear back to round and explain why this occurs these two gears are round and identical now two gears by the laws of gearing must always meet at the point between the two centers at a tangent they must also be the exact same perimeter length if you wish them to rotate one to one now the necessity in non-circular gears in order to have them constantly roll is that they must be a one to one roll uh, for every roll the first the second has to roll now since they always have to touch on the perimeter that means a simple rule is in effect if they're the same length on their perimeters they will continue to roll this means you need a bit of symmetry let's say I grab a knot and I move it up notice how as I move it up the top of my angular position graph up here in the corner is moving away from zero degrees it's telling me that the second gear is going to end like if I went to here my second gear is going to end at 180 degrees so that's a partial rotation gear if I go back here I'll end up with a full rotation gear and I'm round again but as I move away I'm no longer um, being around I'm, I'm no longer a constant rolling gear and you can tell that because the line on our transfer is not pointing at that corner so I'll drop it off now when I drop it off you'll see the line went to the corner again this is because we have rollover checked and rollover fixes the gear so that you can constantly rotate but it makes it inaccurate so let's turn off uh, that 
point. Now you can see that our gear, it's telling us our gear only rotates up to this point. We're only off by a few degrees. But you could grab another knot somewhere else on the gear. Say down here where we hadn't touched anything, where the speed of the gear isn't all that important to you. And you could grab that and move it so that the line comes up and points properly into zero degrees. And if you do that, now your gear can rotate constantly and it will be accurate to what you've selected. We'll get that 1.48 at 276 degrees, for example. And it allows you to have a, a better control, a fully rotating gear, while at the same time um, one which uh, has the accuracy to the numbers that you're requesting. So if you want accuracy as to the ratios that you're requesting in your edit type in box, you're going to have to be prepared to create some bilateral symmetry by moving one point to get the ratio you want and then perhaps moving another simply to correct uh, what you've done uh, to bring it back into a symmetry. Or, or in other words, to make the length of this gear equal to the length of the second gear. It's not always possible to do, and you're going to find that there are times when it's just impossible. You do end up with good partial turn gears, which will <laughs> reflect your data, but sometimes it's absolutely impossible to bring the perimeters back into balance to give yourself a constantly rotating gear. Hopefully, in that case, it's not important to you whether your ratios are exactly what you're asking for, um, because that could be corrected by changing the speed of the motor that's driving the mechanism, for example. And if none of that is true, you can always check the rollover box and uh, go back to have a constantly rotating gear. Okay, so here's what a polar file looks like. In your, audit, in your folder section, you have a new one called Polar Files. Um, it's there so that you can save the results of any non-circulars you create, no matter how you create them. Uh, they'll save into a polar file. You can also ex uh, use an Excel spreadsheet, for example, to put out a polar file. You could simply program it to put out a comma delimited list of uh, basically the ratios as you go through the gear. So what ratio, what speed you want the gear to go at what angle. Um, it's 0 to 360 degrees on the first column. And the second column is simply the speed ratio uh, that you wish to have or the length of the radius or whichever way you want to look at it. That's the beauty of a unity circle. The last line of a polar file is comment. It's commented out and not used other than the fact to remind you of what formula you use to compute this particular uh, object. Uh, the formula at the bottom of this one is t plus sine t divided by 7 plus sine of 2 times t divided by 9 minus etc etc and there's more sine functions. Um, I've loaded it on the screen here and you can see the result of that formula uh, is actually this pear-shaped object. Um, you can analyze any formula uh, in any number of knots you want. For example, here's that same formula uh, in four knots. As you can see, the CB uh, spline has tried to give you as close a representation as it can in four knots. And that's not going to be enough for most engineers who had gone through the trouble of typing in such a complex formula. So let's go to ten knots and analyze formula and see what it looks like. Now we begin to get a gear that more closely approximates um, the thoughts of the person who designed that equation. And this one may be good enough uh, for that particular engineer. And the rule is simply to use as few knots as you can get away with because uh, it's more easy to uh, modify them if you need to make modifications in a particular area. Tweaking, as they would call it. Um, we can take it up as high as 100 points. The choice is yours. Now when we get up to the 100 points you'll notice that the problem that the system is reporting that there's a bit of a problem it's saying the pinion is limited to uh 355 to 360 degrees so it's saying that there's about 5 degrees of this gear 4 degrees of the gear uh which is not properly defined which would be a hint for you to uh check the rollover if you wish it to be fixed up so it'll roll constantly. So even though you cannot see the error, there is an error in that at 100 knots. And that's because as you get more and more knots, uh, you enforce uh, the smoothing on areas that perhaps weren't meant to be uh, quite as smooth. So if we take this down to 50 knots and analyze the equation, you see we still have a bit of an error. Uh, and when we get down to 20 knots, 
the error disappears uh, and yet we have just about the exact same shape so if you don't want to check rollover in order to get the um, gears to properly mesh together um, you might want to use fewer or more knots in the end the system will try to correct uh, whatever you've done anyways but in this case it's a proper representation of the formula that's been entered and if we rotate it you can see our tangent line is moving around uh, quite a bit throughout the rotation but the pressure angles aren't bad you can see on the screen they're green from bright green to uh, a duller green which means that these gears would be fine to uh, to make we also have a pinion control you can change the pinion order if you wish to uh, uh, boost it up to a higher order um, pinion master relationship. Uh, I don't allow yet the master to be raised in order because uh, the master is what you're designing and um, I, as yet I haven't determined whether it's useful for you to be able to increase its order as yet. Now you can always go into the edit box here on the uh, screen and delete any notch that you wish to delete or edit them and change them by typing in the data uh, or you can hit not edit and grab any knot and move things around in that respect there's also a bump edit tool I'm gonna hit bump edit here and when bump edit is hit this disk appears on the screen the disk will follow your mouse and whenever you hit the mouse button it will turn bright red and become a pushing bumper uh, I don't know if you can see that clearly, but as I push, the knots simply follow where I tell the bumper to go. If I move outside the spline, uh, I can corral the knots with the bumping tool to make almost any shape I want. If you can use the bump tool, you can go up to a much higher, um, a much higher number of of knots because you'll find that with bump editing, it's almost like drawing a picture and it's almost like drawing uh, uh, drawing on a drawing program and comes very close to that request I keep getting from people who want to draw their own gears now when you're using it you'll notice that you may find one gets on the wrong side if you like this and consider them like marbles you're gonna push them all around with this bumping tool the difference between the not editing singular and not editing with a bump is that the bump um, restrains the marbles to an angular position they won't move they only change the radius not their angular position and that allows you to do things like what I'm doing running around in a circle and simply stretching things out into the shape that you want them stretched out into um, by doing this you can almost create a pitch line that has fake teeth on it because the shape of the pitch line becomes the teeth itself I don't give you uh, the control to change the tension of that circle much or the size of the circle and the reason for that is um, that you're restricted in terms of how big a spline you can have anyway and as you can see I bump those uh, bump the knots too close together the screen went crazy so I had to hit analyze function to bring us back uh, to normal because you can enforce changes so severe uh, that the system really screws up the screen trying to create objects that just won't fit in reality so you have to take a bit of care when you build these things um, also whenever you build something take a look at it to make sure that you're not having cut off some of these are way too sharp and will probably chop things off as they rotate you can see that the tangent line goes absolutely crazy now that's not to say that you couldn't cut these and have them work a lot of these strange shapes you could cut into plexiglass and with a little bit of sanding on edges and so on um, they would indeed rotate so you can make shapes with this module which uh, will blow people away in terms of uh, how they do rotate when they really shouldn't so let's load another polar file um, I've got one here cam for example and again with any polar file you're free to analyze it with as many knots as you wish um, there's a bounding function on our formula box here where you can restrict the formula to give you answers from I've got it set as a default from 0.2 to 20 because if you type in a formula that gives answers too large it just screws up your screen every time and I wanted to give even the artistic types um, the ability to enter a formula of their desire you can play around and just simply change numbers with these formulas uh, you can use sine cosine logs uh, powers 
tangents. You can, you can use almost any mathematical function which is normally available on a computer and just type it in in English. You'll notice most of my formulas start with T2 is equal to T plus. Now T2 is the angle of the second gear. So what, and T is the angle of the first gear. So whatever you enter as a formula is run 360 times and then the answers from that are used to fill your knots. So um, we feed in the angle of each knot T as T. We take the answer to the equation uh, to be how far out on the radius um, th that particular knot will be. So it's simply an integration of a formula that, you, that you've entered which creates the ratios necessary for uh, your gear. So using this you should be able to create almost any non-circular gear which in reality would work. Um, whenever you enter this module the spokes get turned off. Now the reason that they get turned off is not that you can't use them. Um, it's that every time you do something they would have to be recomputed and that takes a great deal of time sometimes depending on the knot. So when you're finished turn on your knots uh, and you'll be able to create these shapes um, with spokes. The spokes are very good at following the shapes of whatever strange shapes that you create. Um, toothing will probably be in a couple weeks. Uh, other than that, I think that we've shown most of the things that are on the screen. We have a uh, checkbox to turn off knots if you want them out of the way. You can turn off the pressure angle uh, so that it's not in your way. So we have a bound. We have the rollover button, which I think um, we've explained. Ask on the group if you don't understand any of that. I'm, I'm, I know I'm not the best uh, presenter at this type of data. I'm making assumptions that you know things that I know that you probably don't know. Um, the settings for DP and module are only important insofar as they set the centers between the two gears as uh, the original center. The center will change though as you modify the gears. Uh, if you have rollover selected, the center will change. If rollover is not selected, the center will stay the same. Uh, the reason that's important is, let's say you have two gears at a one-to-one -one ratio on a machine. You could actually use this program now to generate two non-circular gears, as long as rollover is not checked, uh, which will fit on the same centers. So you can change a machine which rolls at a constant rate into one that rolls at a rate that you're defining. Um, when the module for toothing is ready, I'll re release another video, a quick one, uh, just to show the toothing process. It's planned to be just as easy as the other modules where you just hit tooth wheel or tooth pinion and it will create the tooth. In the meantime, I guess that's uh, all we, uh, all I really have to say about this. Um, please play with it, enjoy it, let me know what you think. You can create the uh, objects now and put them on the screen. Um, so the only thing left is toothing, and at that point you'll have uh, the ability to create just about any gear that is possible to create as a gear pair. Have fun. See you later.